Yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome back once again, Mr. Andy Wood. How are you? I'm doing great. Excellent. What about yourself? Doing very well. We've got a uh, quite a smattering of of woodisms here: pedals, guitars, the whole swag <laughs> train, various tonal delights, <laughs> weapons of sonic destruction. Oh, phase one of world domination. Yes, yeah. coming soon. That's right. Oh my god. Okay, so we got two pedals. We got a gearbox, which freaking sounds amazing. Wampler gearbox. That's right. The other pedal is made by the fine folks, sir. Mm -hmm. Make these guitars. Certainly. And, uh, yes, the Sir Woodshed Compressor. Really? Yeah. yeah. Do you use a compressor often? I do. Actually, I like to set an amp, um, turn off the delay here, and I like to set an amp where it's just uh, clean-ish, mostly clean. Yeah. Do you want, I can go a little bit cleaner. Though. I think this is it's like, if I hit it, if I play light yeah. with everything wide open. Ooh. But you'll see how much uh, compression, more of a boost, really. Oh, right. So it's like, to me, what's really important about compression is that it doesn't take the top end and smush it. Yeah, for sure. I want the sustain. Mm -hmm. I want that like bubbliness. I want it to take the dynamics and enhance them. Yeah. Much like an old um, studio VCA style compressor yeah. would do its thing, yep. right? And so to get that in a pedal, you know, Kevin, Sir, and I worked really closely to get this thing nailed. And the biggest knob on the pedal, uh, which right there is the ratio, because I want it, like when you roll it all the way out, one to one, yeah. it's a very different sound than a blend knob on a compressor. Yeah, for sure. That's a completely different yep. thing. So uh, I know I know that it kind of sounds like it would be the same thing when you're blending a ratio, but it's not. The compressor mm -hmm. doesn't act the same. Right. The input doesn't feel the same. The guitar doesn't feel the same. Yeah. So with that said, I don't use Dynacomps and Dynacomp style compressors mm -hmm. very often. Yeah. Um, but this uh, this style of compressor is crucial to my sound. How often do you have a compressor on? 75, 80% of the time. Seriously? Mm -hmm. And you find it helps with all the... I think it's not really that it's a helping thing. Yeah. It's but I mean, just keeping thing. it kind of consistent. Yeah, I mean, just like, like when I play a chord, really like lush kind of pretty chord. Versus. Yeah. Just everything feels like it's been mastered. Yeah, no, I yeah. totally. So That's like a little hair in a good way. And, and you can control that. Yeah. This actually has a ton of headroom on the. Okay. So you can actually really drive it really. So hard. what are the knobs? All the knobs we got. Yeah. So the knobs are really simple. Thresh, which is the threshold of the compression. Mm -hmm. Think of that like your door. The ratio, which is the most important one, the biggest. Yeah. And then the gain, which okay. you can just you have makeup gain or additional gain. Yeah. Right. Um, the little switch at the top is the speeds. I found that the speed knob on most compressors for guitar. It's a bit of a wasted scenario because you have fast, slow, medium, and everything in between is kind of irrelevant. <laughs> like really, yeah. like on a guitar compressor. Right. So what I did is I took my favorite traditional compressors, we had them all laid out, and I found like what would be the sweet spot for the speeds on all of them. Yeah. And then once we built this circuit, we decided what fast and slow would be. Okay. According to, and I, just, I always use just the fast one. Yeah. Because I just want it on there, especially for any kind of like, um, you know, yeah. those kind of loops. Show them without it, like what the difference is. Yeah. Yeah, it's really great for ballad stuff. So like without it. Um... It just sounds mixed. Yeah. Is that one already out? It is. You, nice. This one's already selling and a lot of folks already have them. Yeah. Um, I have to say this because okay. full I, disclosure. I, yeah, we're all we all love Rick Beata. Yeah, we all love that yes. guy. Yes, 
he called me one night and we talked for about an hour and a half. He's like, this is the best guitar compressor I've ever bought. And really? he put it on his board. He put it on Instagram. Yeah. It's like, because Rick's got golden ears. Yeah. That's a and, big stamp of approval. Yeah. And so, of course, I reshared it yeah. everywhere. I was like, look, dude, <laughs> now <in> golden ears <laughs> likes the comp, you know. So, glowing I arrived. Review. Yeah, glowing review on that. And it, I mean, it's like, dude, it's, it was really important like, yeah. to be, a, you know, come from the background that I come from to nail a compressor. Oh, you yeah. know, because a lot of people have done it. And essentially, it's either the Boss style or the Dynacomp style. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some outliers. One of my favorite ones for a long time was the Carl Martin compressor. Yeah, those are great. Tried all the Keeley stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, everybody's had a, a, a hat in the ring. Yeah. yeah, a bit like overdrives. But I wanted something that made that did all of the good stuff and didn't crush those transients. Yeah. Those little harmonic sparkles. Yeah, it's tough to do. It's, it's a tall order. But I think we got it right. Sweet. Yeah. Gearbox, that's a Gearbox. lot of knobs. What do we got going okay, on? Okay, so it's really uh, <laughs> there's there's three things that make this really special in my okay. opinion. Let's not talk about the way it sounds. We're mm -hmm, just gonna talk mm -hmm. about the functionality of it. This side over is like your hot routed Marshall in a box kind of thing. Okay, and then this side right here, kind of like a Tumnus Klon inspired yeah. kind of circuit. I did I did some. Uh, minor tweaks to those okay to suit my needs what's really important about gearbox is the four outputs or the the two inputs and two outputs for each side oh, nice. so what i'm doing with the woodshed comp is i've got it after the tumnus circuit interesting and okay before the hot rotted pinnacle oh circuit. yeah yeah that's right. awesome yeah so like if i've got my pinnacle on <laughs> And I did you tweak the pinnacle? I did. Okay. I good. tweaked both sides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so here's my my the AW pinnacle. Yeah. And now when I want a little bit more gas. <laughs> so you see that this right here, this combination is really fundamental to my sound. Yeah. But I want this. Sometimes I like that after clean boost style mm -hmm. circuits. So here's yeah. my. So it's really more just changing the color. This is more of like a bubblier. Yeah. And this one makes it darker and thicker for. Now. Sounds like those killer, like 80s, like awesome, smooth. Yeah, operator. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's really great for uh, any kind of like. Uh, like, like parts yeah. type stuff. Really great for that. Um, the last feature is this knob. Okay. All, all the way counterclockwise. Here's the. Um, of course, one of the features I, I just skipped over was this toggle. Okay. Which means you can put this side into that or that side into that. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without having to re re Yep. That's okay. awesome. But I basically just have channel one into channel two. This knob right here is an internal noise gate. Oh. And instead of being a gate that like shuts the door, mm -hmm. like Dimebag Daryl yeah. or Periphery. Yeah. This is more just to eliminate idle hum noise yeah. floor. So let's turn this on. Let's give us a lot of gain. Let's turn this on. Roll the guitar up. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm just gonna let this grab that floor. Dude, that's crazy. Wow, that's worth the price of admission right there. And you're like a... Uh... Sound guy's dream. Wait, you've got a noise compressor? <laughs> and it doesn't cut it off. Oh. All day, every day, baby. Now, how did Brian figure that one out? Um, without disclosing too much behind <laughs> the curtain stuff, we went through, I was working with Brett, Jake and Brian, and uh, I, it was myself and my guitar tech, John Cooper, and we went through four variants, five variants. They'll know, I can't remember, five variants? of where the parameters were at on the gate. So the gate's very tricky. I don't want to offer too many knobs in too many ways yeah. to make things yeah. 
too easy to screw it up, yep. really. Yeah. So I set the parameters. Now this isn't dime bag Daryl. Again, it's not gonna go chuck them. Yeah, like, suck it up. It's not that kind of not that kind of thing. If you need that, get like a Sentry or a, yeah. you know something like that. Um, this is just meant to get rid of, dude. Lower Broadway, yeah. like oh like poorly wired. Like like one of my favorite venues in in East neon Tennessee. Lights. Yeah, yeah, neon lights. Yeah. One of my favorite venues in East Tennessee is the Bijou Theater, and it's a hundred and five years old. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Everything's noisy in there. Yeah, with the same wiring. Yeah. So, so <laughs> um, this is to alleviate that kind of problem, right? Oh, that is amazing. Um, it's like a P ninety player's dream, dude. It really is, and yeah. a single coil player's yeah, dream. You know, for sure. like, like that's the thing. Um, the things that I did to modify the Tumnus, and it, specifically the Tumnus, was Klon style circuits. Unity gain when you have tone up, like whatever. The, the level always ends up being around nine o'clock, mm -hmm. which never looks right to yeah. me. Um, the other thing, the other side of the coin is I never run it wide open, yeah. like with any claw I've ever yeah, had. I've never had either. the level like, yeah. what is it, like 20 decibels? Yeah. It's something ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So I had Brian change that circuit yeah. to bring that level more in line Sure. Um, with the three knobs at noon yeah. kind of approach. On the Pinnacle, very similar type of thing. The Pinnacle Deluxe has two, uh, so many. Brian, I love you more than anything. It's got so many switches and knobs, and buttons and things. It's it's. I'll, I'll I know Ben will back me up on this. Ben said it, he's he got one. He's like, there's no way this is what you use, dude. Yeah. He's like, it doesn't sound like you. I went over to his house and I said everything. He's like, dude, it sounds just. I was like, yeah. Yeah. So again, I went in. And I told Brian, I was like, let's alleviate everything yeah. that is a variable. Mm -hmm. I want it to be the working man's. Yeah. Literally, Gearbox, I'm a big automotive fan, big car fan, name of a transmission yeah. in Europe, that's yeah. what they call it. But it's also like, if you only have one overdrive pedal, yeah. this can do it. Yeah, and I love that the fact that um, the Pinnacle and, and this one too, even though you would say it's more of like a heavy distortion or It overdrive, can be, for sure. It sounds so good not run yeah. like that. And that's, that's really my thing, is I'll run the Pinnacle, um, back yeah right in there yeah yeah like you can get and, and that's like with uh, yeah. super low output yeah pickups, you exactly. know what I mean? and you can get way into that territory without any um heavy like neat, you don't have to run anything hot. Like no. it's kind of like from the Eric Johnson school of tone where you have several things working together mm -hmm. instead of one source providing yeah. all of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you run your amp with a little bit of hair on it or are you? Close? I run the Sir Bella um, most of the time and it's a f basically like a basement. Mm -hmm. So I run it loud and clean. Okay. Um, with that said, I, I'm a huge fan of diesel amps, Bogner amps, yeah. super high gain monsters, yep. because that performs completely different. Yeah, absolutely. It's just a different thing. Yeah, it's a different beast. Um, one of my favorite sounds is like an old Plexi or a super bass, mm -hmm. and that ran clean. Yeah. With pedals in front of that. Oh, gosh. That is like, yeah. That is Best some, of that is just incredible. Well, and you know what's funny with, with that kind of sound, too? I think a lot of people, um, they, don't know what the back end of an amp sounds like. That's right. And the, the back right. end of an amp, you don't have, when you have that back end going, you don't have to have as much preamp gain. I think that's the gain a lot of people are looking for is the back end sustain you, like bigness. Man, that's the thing that I want is sustain yeah. without the fuzz. Yeah. Without the fizz. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's like, you know, the idea behind Gearbox. And I wanted uh, literally a pedal board like this. Some delay, reverb, gearbox, compressor, it all fits. You can, can you do any of your gigs with that little I, board? I could do any Andy Wood gig like with this board. Seriously. Yeah, so like all the tones from Junk Town were recorded with a prototype of gearbox. No way. They didn't have um, one of the functions that's an internal pot that yeah. you can actually adjust like, the sag input. Like okay. if you play like super hot pickups, let's yeah. say you've got like MG8185. Yeah. <laughs> 
you know, like <laughs> nuclear pickups. Yeah. You can actually open up the gearbox and flip flip a oh, cool. toggle to like to where you won't punish the front end. Yeah. Um, but for me, I use lower output. Yeah, me too. So, um, or medium output at most. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I've got it set like that, which is the factory yeah. standard version. Wow. And, and uh, all of the tones were recorded with a prototype that didn't have the gate in it and didn't have the, some of the switching functions. Yeah. yeah just but wait, there's more. Things. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah, exactly. So uh <laughs> give me give me a signature tone, like like with, oh, the, I mean, with like the pedals me, and like, uh, like yeah, like UA stuff. A little bit of just a little bit of like Ooh, classic, what's the delay. Yeah, on. just a classic like dotted eighth, what I always call the Texas delay, the Andy Timmons, EJ, mm -hmm. that you know, that kind of thing. Okay. So like if I were to play the riff to junk town. <laughs> That would be like, I would use it off. And then for the... That would also be like uh, the tones from, this would be like one of the tones from... And then I would use Tricep. Another signature tone would be like a. That, that would be on there. Uh, running it back like this is how I did some of the ballads. a tune called Back to Austin that's dedicated to EJ and then I just kind of dump the dump the Dude, that you know, sounds amazing. So just, just some simple things and this is what happens when you invert the mids and the treble, which is another okay. great tune. <laughs> This is actually how I recorded Junk Town. With that kind of set. Yeah. Or like, uh, another one would be like, uh. <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of like, I wanted something that was like. What a crazy, like small. In. Yeah. Just knock your socks off rig. And, What's the. Um, and, other, and, and like, I'm not using my amps. Yeah. That's another thing to point out. Like I, I play a lot of times where it's a clinic, it's a fly date, it's yeah. a back line, it's a whatever, where it's like, I don't have my amps. Yeah. You know, I think that's common these days. It's yeah, getting more sure. and more common. Yeah. You know, if you're not Kiss or yeah. Motley Crue, you know. You're gonna be doing a lot of fly dates. And I wanted something that was like, dude, what if I get a twin? Oh. What if I get a JCM 2000? What if yeah. I get something that I just don't even use? Yeah. You know, I want the flexibility without complexity. Yeah, that, those are awesome, man. What, um, what am I like, Smoky Blues tone? Well, let's I mean, go, let's go through, let's go, let's drive some home. Okay, like, so, I, I Smoky would, Blues. I would probably crank the gain on this channel. Okay. Nice. All right, Van Halen. Van Halen, I'm uh. going to go maybe here and then 
Because you do an 80s gig, right? I don't. Oh, I thought you did. I, I do, but I, and it's like not me. Oh, you know okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So you can tell it's like, I mean, like, yeah. this is a friggin' to tell it, keep right. in mind, it's yeah. like, no, no, no hamburger yeah. pickups, these right. are hot dogs, you know? <laughs> but like, uh, oh wait, come on dude, get in there, just guess what? Yeah, so like with, with the hamburger pickups, you can really get, in, really get into it down. Dude. All of that kind of foolishness is everywhere, you know? You can have it. And Dead Quiet. Boom, dude. That's that's worth the price of admission. One of my favorite tones is actually take this, um, set it back like I had it like this. And check out this. This sound is like uh Ooh. That's yeah. like a the neck most coil, you know. What pickups are those? These are Thornbucker pickups. They sound freaking awesome. <laughs> You know, it's kind of got got what I need. It's got what it takes, as they say. What do you use for your uh, verb? Um, you know, I I always lean into some sort of plate verb. Yeah. Uh, just like in a room like this when we're recording direct, mm -hmm. like I want it to feel like we're the yeah. amp sitting somewhere. You're somewhere, yeah. You know, and it's not a lot. It just sounds like we're somewhere. Uh, yeah. And it's actually. That subtlety is really difficult to replicate. Yeah. And I, I, I and not I don't think that UA is the only kid on the block that can do it, but I think you're spending four hundred dollars. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're doing UA or Strymon. Yeah. Like you're spending some Money. dough yeah. because I did a reverb shootout on my channel, and the thing that I noticed were the uh, ins and outs. And how much they degraded the tone mm -hmm. on cheaper reverbs. Yeah, oh yeah. And uh, I noticed that the decay didn't sound like the amp was in a room. Mm -hmm. However, the super mega cathedral, um, like things that like worship guys love, yeah. where it's like you're using reverb as an effect. Yeah. Dude, the Hall of Fame and all that yeah, stuff was great. great yeah. The subtle stuff, yeah. this thing is what was really. Yeah. Like that's got that pre-delay of like, it sounds like the sound is hitting a wall and coming back. You know, it's interesting too. Um, the higher end ones, when you have an amp, cause I always play with a little bit of grit on the, on amps. the amp. Yeah. yeah. And I love the way that something like this or a Strymon reacts on it. Just, yeah. With just a little bit, it creates it. like a really yeah. cool into the front, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. I get sound. that. Yeah. And and that's the same uh, same way with the delay. I'm not using anything crazy. This thing's got more horsepower than I need. Yeah. But that right there is like if I was gonna play my song Reach. Now add the verb, so we're in a room. Or if I was gonna play Hearts Goodbye. It's about the subtleties of yeah. it, you know? And then I would step on this. And then when we get to the end of the song, you know, it's like... Crazy how 
how versatile that tiny pedalboard is. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I usually have to cover a lot of ground in, yeah. in my own shows, and, and especially clinics, because I don't know... And, and in all fairness, doing this thing with you today, yeah. like we jump through a lot of genres and a lot of tones. Yeah. And I don't want anything to kind of suffer. Yeah. Now, obviously, nothing's like, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say it's like like having a Bogner and Diesel. And yeah. It's like, it's not the no. same. No, no. It's but I feel world. like everything that I'm doing um, is accurate, is yeah. the right word. Things sound accurate. Brian's, and authentic. Brian's really good at getting like, amp in a box yeah kind of a sound yeah he is yeah authenticity is like the word that i would go for and to me like when i play my tunes this is what i use yeah like when i play junk town yeah but now the older records i was using um one of kyle rhodes amps okay the the colossus and i use that herbert i like herbert is one of my like <laughs> desert a island classic amps. man dude that's a great amp yeah. and i always have one of those I recently got a uh, Bogner Shiva. It's yeah. really cool. Yep. Um, you know, and there's just a lot of times in the studio, you want to have everything. Mm -hmm. The point is, is like, can I take this? Yeah. Can I put it in my backpack? Yep. And go. Yeah. You know? So like when I was playing with Low Cash, I used a Fractal. Yeah. But no amps on stage. Yeah. Right? Makes um, sense. Yeah. It, it was a different thing. The, the tones were set all the time. The show was yeah. the same all the time. Yeah. And I think that's important is like knowing what gig you're going to, like, uh, you know, you mentioned the Carrie Underwood state, the whole show's yeah. in a rack. Yep. That's, that's a completely different thing versus something like today mm -hmm. where we're hanging out and you're like, Hey man, can you dial this in? Yeah. Or a guitar show, like, yeah. like where you're doing a lot of instrumental jamming you yeah. want to reach down and have more or less or something yeah and not have to worry about preset i can For only sure. perform this this way because it's yeah. locked into the grid yeah yeah i mean especially with your own gigs like room to room like voltage like all that fluctuation it's so easy just to have it right dude what if yeah. you have a buddy that comes that night yeah <laughs> and like now the show's different you're like hey man jump on stage and play yeah. a couple of tunes yeah like that that kind of stuff happens a lot yep. you know in uh you know, the guitar nerd world. Yeah, you know? for sure. For sure. Nice. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna leave all of Andy's links down below. Check out the Wampler and the compressor. I'll leave links to both of those as well. Thank you, sir. Was Thank that? you, Brett. All right. Yeah, cheers. See you next time.